and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today we're making coasters and I'm already covered in paint. <laughs> How does it get any better than this? All right so I'm oh wow it's changing. No no I'm doing it that way. Okay so uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little pot of white that I have that's sitting here having been used for other things and I'm going to make it a light gold. Just a touch of gold in there. Now this is Reeves Titanium White mixed with Reeves Gold. So it's just... I want a light colour in this pour but I don't want a I don't want white so we have golden white how's it getting any better than that so I just thought I would share that part of the paint mixing process with you all because um, just so that you know that I wasn't lying when I said this isn't white <laughs> that's a kidney bit of that all right nice next thing we're going to do is we're going to cover these coasters in black so i'm going to move my colors out of the way a little bit now just so that you know all of my paints are mixed with Floetrol and water some of them have a little bit of pva in but i think it's only the white has a little bit of PVA because that's left over from those experiments I was doing. Um, it's been a really interesting conversation on the Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group um, about what is Floetrol. And somebody actually found the um, the ingredients of what Floetrol is and it apparently is basically watered down PVA with some extra polymers added. So those of you that have got polymer medium, um, mix that with your PVA and water and you got Floetrol. Well that's how I read the ingredients. So that was quite interesting um, I have not bought polymer medium so I have no idea whether that would work <laughs> I'm not recommending it uh, just suggesting it's a possibility and I have no idea what the variation of price is I know in some countries flow trial is absolutely horrendously expensive so it might be a way of creating a similar result um, if you can get your hands on polymer medium and PVA glue. So, for those of you that aren't sure what PVA glue is, PVA stands for polyvinyl acetate. Now, I say it with an American accent because <laughs> when my eldest son was little. And we lived with my in-laws. Um, I used to watch a lot of the Living Channel, which was lots of arty, crafty shows. And um, that was, they always used to talk about, and now I'm going to use polyvinyl acetate. And I had no idea what this stuff was. Because we just call it PVA and we always have. Um, and one day I went on Google because I was sick of this and I was like, I wonder if we can buy P polyvinyl acetate in New Zealand. And I, so I searched up, what is polyvinyl acetate? Um, yeah, PVA glue. So, um, maybe in your country you call it something else. Um, but it's just that white craft glue or also white wood glue or wood glue that cl dries clear and um, 
the higher the strength of glue, the more more of the binders that you're actually after. So, um, so while I'm rabbiting on around here, what am I actually doing? I'm these are pre-made coasters that I bought from Kmart. So if you're in New Zealand or Australia, you'll know what Kmart is. Um, I think you even have Kmart in America, but I don't quote me on that. Um, and these are just little MDF circles with cork already stuck on the back of them. So... I'm just going around making sure that all the edges are covered before I pour. And somebody said, how do you protect the cork on the back? I don't. Um, these are so fine already. I actually then add another layer of cork. You can buy sheets of cork and just glue it on. And then cut around it so you glue the well this is how i do it i glue the coasters down onto the cork and then once it's dry i cut it off in a nice simple cutting mechanism called a knife <laughs> It's, it's interesting though, have you ever noticed, I'm rabbiting a bit today because I'm trying to fill in time, have you ever noticed how there is a tool for everything and quite honestly how many of those tools do you actually need to do what you're about to do? Yes it's fun to have $400 cutters but if you're only going to cut one thing with it, huge waste of money. When a good craft knife will do multiple jobs. All right, there we go. Clean the fingers, Michelle. All right, so what's the next step? The next step is to create something to pour. I'm going to pour like a ribbon pour across all of them and try and make it look like they're a set <laughs> so what i've got here is just a ziploc bag with one corner pushed down into the center and um, the rest of it folded over to kind of hold it in place and i'm gonna try and run the colors down the sides So that we don't get a puddle as such. In one place. That may or may not work. So we've got grass green. Aquamarine blue. Ultramarine blue, sorry. Copper. And our white gold. And then I'm going to start pouring from right up high so that it falls down and gives us, hopefully, the target being. Oh, where's my red? There it is. I haven't put any red in there yet. Let's do that from right up high. Lots of red. There we go. That'll make a difference. And then just some pure gold as well. So there's a possibility I'll make a huge mess. So I'm going to move those open paint pots out of the way. I believe there is silicon in the copper and in the red. But not in anything else. So that'll be fun. That looks cool. 
Now, the person I've seen, I've seen this done by two people, and I have no idea who did it first, or even if they were copying somebody else. So, um, that was Anne-Marie Ritterhoff, and um, Emma to, M2D Art. So... Somebody else. If they got off of someone else, I apologise. Right. So we've now got it's kind of like a piping bag. We're going to cut the end off and see what happens. Ah. And then we're going to make a puddle on the ground and see what happens to that too. Enough paint there to have covered a whole painting, but I'm sure I'll get some beautiful pendants out of that right so uh, maybe I will torch it first guess what I bought myself a new torch yay I don't have to light it with the other one now this one's really cool it looks like um what on earth was that I think we just had an earthquake how cool is that? You guys witnessed an earthquake. It certainly wasn't a truck. Anyway. I will check the app in a minute and tell you whether or not that is the case. But I'm painting. Well, we've definitely got something happening cut in there silicon-wise, which is awesome. And at this point, they're all looking similar. <laughs> I'm just going to scrape this off here to start with. And stretch. Maybe I'll do two at a time because this might take a while. Hmm. I wonder where my blue got to. And my green. They're not there, are they? funky so far there we go let's do that Ooh, this one's got a lot more on it that one's going faster Oh, look at that gold coming through in that one. Woohoo! Turn it quick around. Let it pull down the other way. actually got I can see a little bit of blue in that one flip that around hmm 
Well, they definitely look alike. That one's definitely not got as much paint as the rest of them. Let's try and elongate some of these cells a bit. No, sorry, they're already elongated. Round them. Round them. Well, yes and no. I'm not so sure. I found the green, it's over here. Check this out. That's where all the green went. Oh, that's pretty too. Let me show you this bit where my scissors were. All right. So, put that one back that way, and that one back that way. I'm not quite like that one. I like this one. This one's cool. All right. Sorry, I just noticed that some of them were losing their paint and I need to flip them around and there we go. Right, so this, what are we going to do with this? Well, see this is really cool technique called swiping. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens. Oh, see, there's the blue and the green. <sighs> Maybe I should have done a second run around them all, but I didn't. I think I'm going to end up ripping this off because I keep shutting it and then I can't start it with it down. Hmm. What do you reckon? I think there's some possibilities in there. Quite like, quite like the cells in here. But I really like this colour here. Sorry, a bit out of camera there. Let's see what's happening in that bit. Oh. All right. Just had to stand that one back up because it was running off the edge. All right, I'm going to bring you back over and we'll deal with these coasters because... Not a hundred percent happy with them to be honest there's some interesting stuff going on just not quite what I had in mind because all my colors over here <laughs> I shouldn't have just squeezed the bag out
Now that's a truck. Still not enough paint on this one. No, I'm not liking it, not liking it at all. See, look, it's just gone a mud puddle. A mud puddle it is. A middly, muddly, muddly moo. Puddly, puddly, puddly poo. So, what am I going to do? Sweepy, swipey, swipey, swoo for Halloween. This is what we do. I hadn't intended this to be a Halloween for, but oh well. We've got Sparkly Night. Okay, let's try something different. Different, maybe? Similar, maybe? All right. I get all those lines going the same way. see what magic we can create haven't done anything like this for a while Do, 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 do. Okay. There we go. 
got the pink drizzles drizzles And we got the green. And then the gold. So we've got copper underneath and gold on top. All right. Now. not to get my sleeve in the bottom one Um, now, then the question comes, do I like these ones? <laughs> no, not really. What's going on, guys? What are you, what's the universe trying to tell me with these fours? Stop it. Do something else. How much colour do I need to put on here before I decide that I don't like them? Nope, nothing. What's happening, guys? What are you aware of? What am I not willing to be aware of? What's required? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to play because you know what? Playing's fun. And when you play, sometimes you create something beyond your imagination. Because you don't even realize that that was possible until you started. Sometimes you have so much significance on getting a good result that you judge everything. 
And if you give up and just go, eh, whatever happens, happens, then you can actually see the beauty. So, we're going to make squish biscuits. Yes. Uh, uh. There you go. That's kind of cool. What are we going to get out of this one? What do you reckon? Squish biscuits. <laughs> Can't imagine they're going to be particularly flat at this rate though. So much paint on them. we go what do you reckon I reckon they're funky I don't think they're gonna be particularly flat the cups of coffee to go on had no intention of resining them so hmm Okay, I need to clean these. <laughs> well, uh, to be honest, I like them the most out of anything I've done so on them so far. Well, still not exceedingly happy. And see what the torch does. There's bound to be air bubbles in after that sort of behaviour. Oh, some cells on that one. I was having fun on the computer today. One of the girls in the Acrylic Pouring for Fun group introduced me to this app called Mirror Lab. And, um... Some of these might be a good contribution to that app, actually. Take photos of the cool bits out of an ugly painting. And, um, and then do weird stuff with them. There's all sorts of different effects and methods that you can do with them. I was playing with the um, kaleidoscope. And um, made this very, very cool green thing. Um, which I have uploaded into Redbubble. And applied to t-shirts and cups and stuff like that. So if you are... If you know somebody that likes green and paisley-ish and buy them something fun and funky that might be something for you to think about or go and upload one of your own pictures and make gifts plenty of time before the holiday season, as it is called, to be politically correct. Oh, political correctness. Interesting arguments for all of that. For and against. I'm not going there. Please don't bring political, religious or um, ethical discussions into the acrylic pouring for fun. None of those are relevant to pouring paint. What is going on here? I don't like them. There aren't even little pieces of them that I want to dip a, paint, a pendant in. Saying that, I lie. There is a piece there. 
that I'd make a pendant out of. I don't like them. I might wash them off. What's right about this? I'm not kidding, guys. Alright, so I've washed my hands and I got my pendants out. I think I might just put a single round one into that piece I just pointed to. Now, all I do is get a piece of blue tack, stick it on the rounded side of the cabochon. And then dip it in. And that's done. It's captured the piece I wanted. So, pop that over there to dry. All right, last ditch effort to do something interesting with this paint. What have I got here that I can use? Just washed my hands and now I'm going to get them all dirty again by going like this. This is my way of undercoating my uh, my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I'm undercoating the coasters. Boop. To wash the underside of that one. Okay, so you, know, you can't keep the bottoms of these clean and because they're cork you can't put tape on them. This doesn't work. So there we go. We've got a funky little pot. Let's see if we can get anything from this option. <laughs> Some of you know that I've scraped off paintings into a pot before and come up with the most amazing creations. And other times it just uh, totally goes whoop. There's some cool colours in there, definitely. Definitely some pendant swirls on that one. Might just leave it like that and see what I can get out of these.
Hmm. Okay. Goldy, greeny, purpley, black. How does it get any better than that? Any cells? Any cells in that one? Okay, let's show you what we've got. Very tancy, tiny little cells in there. Not really much in that one either. I do like the way these are kind of folding over on it themselves. I think I might capture that on a long one. And I really like this. Looks almost like a um, Maori green stone carving with its twirls and twiddles. Right, so let's capture that and call it a day. Oh, fingers clean. Sorry, I forgot to press pause for cleaning my hands. So, I need a bit of blue tack. Where did I put that down? Uh oh. There it is. Found it. It's okay. Stop looking. I found it. Yeah. The question then becomes I think I will do. Oh, sorry. Let's. Let's let you observe. The cool thing about capturing it like this is you can just sort of hang it over and go, hmm, do I like that? Do I like that? How do I like this positioned? Think. I like it like that. That way around. Let me show you what I mean. Like that. Not very obvious. I reckon I think that one's pretty funky so we'll let that dry and then I'm going to do an oval one with this piece while we're talking this is kind of drifting and it's actually so I must like it saying what about me I can be beautiful too Not big enough. I 
if you wonder what I do when I go off camera when I'm putting the blue tack on I always rub the bit that the paint is going to go on on a clean piece of clothing uh, double touch I wonder how that'll come out Mm. It looks better up that way. Okay, my. Hmm. I'm going to do a round one. An equal round one. Because I've got lots of round ones. Now where do I want it? That was a double touch as well. But I think I managed to save it. Oops, I've got paint on the top now. I'm trying to show you. How's that one? That one's kind of funky. I like that one. Alright. So guys, I've played with paint. I've made a mess with paint. And now all I've got left is some smushed bits of paint. Um... And some undercoated MDF coasters. <laughs> <laughs> so I keep asking what else is possible here that I hadn't imagined. And uh, you never know what will show up. Really. Sometimes it's a mess. And sometimes you'll get something out of it that you hadn't actually expected to get out of it. I certainly didn't expect to only get jewellery out of this. But, that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, it's turned out. So, I may as well smear that round a bit and leave them to dry and come back and do something else on them later. Preferably with a black background. <laughs> Alright guys. I will. See you all another time soon. I adore you. Keep creating. Keep being you. And. Keep asking. What will my life be like in five years if I choose this? What will my life be like in five years if I don't choose it? What will my life be like in five years if I treat people like this? What will my life be like in five years if I argue this, this point of view forever in a day? How does it get any better than that? Perfect timing. My son's just got home. I adore you all. Bye-bye.